From his humble Jersey roots to becoming a global icon with over 135 million records sold, Springsteen's captivating songs have soundtracked American working class life for over 50 years. His marathon live shows are the stuff of legends. Hey everyone, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'm back with another house tour. Today we're taking a deep dive into the real estate portfolio of the legendary Bruce Springsteen. Through it all, Bruce has never forgotten his New Jersey homeland. We'll explore the key houses along his journey from the simple dwellings where he penned early hits to his sprawling horse farm estate. So let's fire up some E Street Band classics and jump right in. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Let's talk about Bruce's life first. Bruce Frederick Joseph Springsteen entered the world on September 23rd, 1949 at Monmouth Medical Center in Long Branch, New Jersey. Bruce grew up in a modest ranch home on South Street in Freehold Township, New Jersey. His mother Adele brought home the bacon as a legal secretary while his father Douglas worked jobs as a bus driver, prison guard, and more. Like any good Jersey kid, Bruce was raised Catholic and attended St. Rose of Lima Elementary School. He frequently clashed with the nuns and priests there. Bruce felt like a total outcast, ultimately skipping his high school graduation because he hated the experience so much. After a while at community college, he dropped out altogether since the only careers he saw for himself were bum, thief, or musician. It all started for Bruce when he saw Elvis Presley's legendary 1956 appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. Immediately bitten by the rock and roll bug, seven-year-old Bruce got a plastic guitar to strum on. At 13, his mom took out a loan to buy Bruce his very first real six string, a $60 Ken guitar that inspired his song The Wish decades later. From there, he taught himself guitar obsessively. Once saying, I locked myself in my room for many months trying to learn to play. He started gigging locally at 16 with his first real band, The Castiles, cutting two original songs at a Brick Township studio in 1966. They played all the usual New Jersey teen dance halls and clubs. It was 1972 when Bruce first auditioned for legendary Columbia Records executive John Hammond at their New York City studio. Hammond was blown away hearing the unknown kid's original songs on just guitar and piano. He immediately signed Bruce to Columbia, seeing a superstar in the making, just as he had with Bob Dylan years before. Bruce was still a rising act playing in obscurity. He had yet to earn a fraction of the success and fame coming his way down the road. For now, he had had to keep honing his craft. After years spent on producing The River, Bruce finally released the 20 track masterpiece in 1980 as a sprawling musical portrait of American life. It became his very first number one album and also his first record certified five times platinum for over five million copies sold in the US alone. The hits just kept flowing. When Bruce reunited with the E Street Band in 1984 to record Born in the USA, this one truly turned him into a global pop culture icon. It moved over 30 million copies worldwide and counting, one of the highest selling albums ever. It shows Bruce's gift for fusing rock with the struggles of everyday Americans. Welcome to the glory days, folks. Bruce Springsteen had officially reached the stratosphere of fame. When Bruce first hit it big in the early 80s after Born in the USA, he wasted no time upgrading his New Jersey lifestyle. He purchased a stunning 14,000 square foot mansion in the posh town of Rumson. The lavish stone estate boasted six bedrooms, eight bathrooms, and a swimming pool with views. The dramatic interiors featured marble flooring, ornate chandeliers, and Bruce's beloved grand piano. It was the ultimate party house for an 80s rock star at the peak of fame. Coming off the enormous two-year undertaking of Born in the USA, Bruce shifted gears again with 1987's Tunnel of Love, this time exploring intimacy issues and the isolation of his own celebrity through moody folk pop and synth rock. This album's songs reflected maturity as his first marriage was crumbling and he'd become involved with backup singer Patti Schialfa. After divorcing Julianne Phillips, Bruce moved in with Patti in 1990. Him leaving the E Street band signaled Bruce was entering a new artistic period away from the familiar sound that made him famous. 
After marrying Patty in 1991, Bruce settled into a sprawling 378-acre compound in nearby Colts Neck, New Jersey. The impressive rural property features stables for Bruce's horses, riding arenas, tennis courts, a caretaker's cottage, and a six-bedroom main house with luxe amenities. There's an epic Olympic-sized swimming pool, home theater, wine cellar, and chef's kitchen. The interiors blend classic and modern styles. It's the ideal private sanctuary just a short drive from Bruce's hometown. Bruce and Patty raise their three kids out here. It's the perfect pastoral escape from the city life and strobe lights. A lakeside gazebo offers Bruce a serene spot to strum his guitar away from crowds. Never one to forget his fans on the West Coast, Bruce dropped $11 million on a modern 10,000 square foot mansion in Beverly Hills in 2004. This stunning contemporary home molded elegance and cutting edge style with floor to ceiling windows, leaf lines, and an infinity pool. Outdoors, there was a lush garden, koi pond, and tennis court. Inside, Bruce could jam on the grand piano in the living room or relax in the neutral, high-tech interiors. It served as Bruce's home base while performing on the West Coast. After selling his previous Rumson, New Jersey mansion, Bruce returned to the coastal town in 2008 by purchasing a brand new, ultra-modern dream home for $12 million that remains his primary residence up until today. The striking 8,200 square foot residence features five bedrooms, six full baths, two half baths, and the open floor plan Bruce loves. Soaring ceilings, walls of windows, a chef's kitchen, a home theater, a wine cellar, this place is decked out in luxury. The outdoor spaces are just as impressive, with a swimming pool, a spa, and a cabana that makes the property feel like a private resort. It's a true reflection of the boss's success and taste, and a perfect place for him to unwind and recharge. For Bruce, this Rumson home combined the seaside lifestyle he loved with peaceful privacy, and plenty of space when he needed to get off the road. Bruce's latest acquisition brings him back to his rural roots, a 10-acre equestrian farmhouse estate in Wellington, Florida, which he bought in 2019. Along with the charming four-bedroom main farmhouse, this compound has a guest house, stables, training facilities, and paddocks for his beloved horses. Modern amenities like the pool still make an appearance, but the country ambiance transports Bruce back to his early days in low-key Jersey farmhouses pursuing his musical passion. It's a true oasis that allows him to escape the pressures of the road and spend time with his family and horses. For over 50 incredible years, Bruce Springsteen has soundtracked the struggles and dreams of working people across America with his songs. He remains a beacon of New Jersey pride. From the humble childhood that shaped his writing to the early bands, Jersey bars trying to make it, to the marathon concerts that built his legend, Bruce always kept his home state close at heart. Before we wrap up this house tour, answer this question for me. What is your favorite Springsteen song? Let me know in the comments below. I'm a fan myself, but I love some of his sadder songs too that tell a story, like Racing in the Street. Don't forget to hit subscribe and that notification bell so you never miss a new house tour. Follow me on Instagram for more content. Thank you for joining me in this video and I'll see you all in another one. Bye!